God is a good God. He has given us the Holy Spirit to be with us. And the beginning of this new year, we are just praying that this place will be filled with his glory, with his love, with his goodness, with his mercy, healing power, deliverance power, salvation power. I believe that this year will be a wonderful year where the Spirit of God will move upon us through his church, through his people. As we were singing this morning, I could see in the spirit realm, sometimes I see pictures how the heavenly father is in the throne and he looks down to us, his people. And he said, I love them very, very much. You say to me, but Pastor Jan, how is it possible? I'm a, I was a sinner. I've done things wrong. But you know what? The Father doesn't look directly from heaven upon you. He looks through Jesus Christ. And when he looks through Jesus Christ, then your sins are under Christ. He doesn't see anything. He just sees your goodness. He just sees you and he loves you. The Bible says that he loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son to die on the cross of Calvary so that he can love you because he wants you to be saved. He wants you to be a new creation in God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we come this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ because we can't come directly to the Father because of the sin in our lives. But when we come through Jesus Christ, the sin stays behind. And we can stand before the Father and we can say, Father, how is it possible that we as the children of God can come through Jesus Christ and say to the Father of Jesus, our Father? Was it not the Lord Jesus Christ that taught us to pray this way? Our Father that art in heaven. How is it possible? Lord, I thank you that you died on the cross and you take our sins away. And therefore, because we come through Jesus Christ to the Father, we can honor the Father. And Father, we thank you that you bless us everyone in this place. I pray, Lord, this year, 2023, will be a wonderful year for each and every one. Let your blessing upon us. Destroy the works of the devil that wants to destroy us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for your glory so that we are God's people that will hold fast to the things of the word of God to what the Holy Spirit have taught us. Therefore, Lord God, I thank you that we belong to you. This church belongs to the Lord. We as pastors are not important. We are only an instrument from God to bring your people here in this place closer to the Lord. I pray, Lord, as I open up the word of God and we go into the word of God that your hand will be upon us and that our ears can hear that revelation and understanding will come to us so that we, are, we know who we are in Christ. And whatever comes against us in 2023, we bind it in Jesus' name. If it's from the devil, he has no right on us because we belong to the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit will help us. And therefore, Lord God, if we do what God tells us in the word of God, we know that his blessing will be with us. I pray, Lord, that none of us here in this building will be lost during this year. And I'm talking about a spiritual loss. 
a loss that they will say we don't need Lord Jesus anymore. We're just going to do our own way. I pray, Lord God, that there will be a relationship between us and the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, help us this year to be sensitive. Sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Speak to them. Speak to your people. And build us up, Lord, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. 2023. What kind of a year will it be? You say, Pastor Jan, we can't, we can't tell what the future will hold for us. The future is in the hands of God. Yes, that is true. God has the future in his hand, but your own future is in your hand. Because you make choices and God will not force you to serve him. God will allow you to make your own choices. choices. That's why the future is in the hands of God, but your future is in your own hands. And I pray that this year, 2023, you will make the right choices. I believe with all of my heart that the Holy Spirit will help us in this church for a mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit and that many things will happen, especially according to the prophetic word that has been spoken in the word of God. And I want you to take I want to take you this morning to the prophetic word of God because we want the blessings of God upon us and God wants to bless you this year. God wants you to prosper this year. But it depends on you and on me how we surrender to the Lord, how we give ourselves over to Him and how we allow the Spirit of God to lead us in Jesus' name. One thing I can say is that the time is short. From 22 to 23, one year closer to the coming, second coming of the Lord. One of the things that is absolutely true in the Bible is that God is sending Jesus Christ again. When he comes, and we are ready, we will be with him forever and ever. If you are not ready, it's too late. It's now still grace. And when we have not accepted Jesus Christ, now is the time to accept him. Now is the day of salvation. So let me take you to the prophetic word in the Bible in Acts chapter 3. This was after Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary, after he rose from the dead, after he ascended into the heavens, after the Holy Spirit was poured out and Peter was talking his first message after the Holy Spirit came upon him. And in verse 18, it says this, but those things, yeah, you've got it here. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of his prophets, that's the Old Testament prophets, what God foretold by them, that the Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. In other words, Christ has suffered on the cross. He's now risen. He's in the throne room next to his father. That part of the prophecy has been fulfilled. Verse 19. Repent therefore and be converted. Why? That your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing for 2023. You say, will it be times of refreshing? I say, yes. Yeah. 
for those that have repented, for those that are people of God, it is a time of refreshing. We are entering 2023 with a refreshing from heaven. Times of wonderful refreshings, hallelujah, in this year. That it may come from the presence of the Lord. And that is our responsibility. We want the presence of God in this place. Without the presence, we will not have times of refreshing. So it doesn't depend on me. It depends on you to bring the presence of God into this place. Verse 20. And that he may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you before. So the time that Jesus was on the earth has been preached. And we're still preaching about Jesus first coming. But now he says that he may send Jesus who has risen and sits in the throne room of God back to us again. That's a prophetic word for each and every one. And I want you to grasp it and to have it in your spirit. 21, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration. So when Jesus rose from the dead and he ascended up to the heavens, heaven received him until the times of restoration. So when we can get the times of restoration in our church, which I believe we will have this year, of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophet since the world began, for Moses truly said to the fathers, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from the brethren, which is Jesus Christ. He will be raised up. Him you shall hear in all things, not Moses. We've heard Moses and Moses brought us from Egypt out of sin to the wilderness and he says, don't follow me because God is going to raise up somebody which is Jesus Christ. When he comes, follow him. And you shall hear in all things whatever he says to you. Is your heart open to receive whatever the Lord is speaking to you? I want you to open up your heart for the Lord Jesus Christ so that you will hear exactly what he says. Verse 23. And it shall come to pass that every soul who will not hear the prophet, that's not us. That's those outside. Those who will not hear the prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. So for some people, it will be resurrection. For some people, it will be destruction. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and those who followed as many as have spoken also foretold these days. And I'm also foretold, for, uh, uh, foretell the things of the future to you. Jesus Christ is coming again. He says, verse 25, you are sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying to Abraham, and in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. You are not maybe a natural seed of Abraham, but we are the spiritual seed of Abraham. When we have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, you automatically comes under the blessings of Abraham. Verse 26, to you first, God, having raised up his servant, Jesus. God raised him up when he was in the tomb. Sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from iniquity. This is the word of God and the prophetic word of God that brings revelation to us into our spirits. And when revelation comes, revelation demands obedience. Let me repeat it. Revelation demands obedience. Obedience brings blessing. That means disobedience brings curses. 
We are people here together in Fountain of Life that say we want to hear the voice of God. We want to fulfill what he tells us. We want to have the revelation that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We want all those things in our spirit and then the blessing shall come. So the choice is yours. You say, no, no, Pastor Jan. The choice is in the hands of God. I said, no. God has given you authority. And God has given you the rule. The choice is in your hand. I know that the future of the world is in God's hand. But your life is in your own hands. You'll have to make a choice. And I'm so glad to see a lot of people in this place that says we choose Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So you are either willing to walk in obedience to God. Or they will reject his law, his order and disaster will come upon them. The part that God wants to do in your life or your unwillingness to do what he says will make the difference for 2023. 2023 will, of course, go his course. But your future is in your hands. So when Moses died, a great leader for the people of God, Joshua took over. And the very th first things that Joshua said to the people is in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 7. Let me get it for you. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous. That's my words to you today for 2023. Be strong. And very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. True prosperity comes from obedience to the word of God. Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. In other words, you must know the word of God. You must put it in your mouth. It shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous. When do you make your way prosperous? When you obey the word of God. And then you will have good success. That's the kind of success that will come to you in 2023. If you do what God tells us here in the word of God. Have I not commanded you be strong and be good of good courage? Do not be afraid. Sometimes we'll have to. We will be challenged by the devil. Don't be afraid. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Why is that? Remember, when they sent out the 12 spies, 10 of the 12 spies came back with a negative report. And when they heard the negative report, they started crying and they say, we cannot do that because the 10 spies that were sent to see how the nation was, the inheritance of God, they came back and said, there are giants in the land and we are not able to take them. Why? Because we look like grasshoppers. I want to say this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are not a grasshopper. You are not a grasshopper. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't get that mentality in your mind. 
I'm only a grasshopper. I can't do it. I can't fulfill. I can't walk in the ways of God. I can't take the promises of God. No, you are a child of God. You say, but we can't take the promises of God. You can take the promises of God. It's true that you can't take the promises of God if you don't see, if you see yourself as a grasshopper. But we don't see ourselves as grasshoppers. We are the people of God. We are the people that will bring the change to our city, to our family. We are the people that are filled with him. We are following him. And we are stronger than the devil. It doesn't matter if the devil comes against you like giants. God is with you. He will not leave you. So what we want to do in 2023, we want to take the promises of God seriously and we want to say, thank you, Lord God, you are with us. We can do it. Therefore, Joshua was a good leader of Israel. He knows victory comes through faith in God and obedience to his word. And I want to say the very same thing. Faith in God and obedience to his word will give you the victory. Not the strength of your army. It's not in any other things. It's in faith in God. Now, Joshua was not a king. He was a judge. He was a judge over Israel. And their function was to keep the people in obedience to God. That's what I want to do. Keep you in obedience to God. But when corruption comes, and we see corruption in the world all over, what are the people doing? The people are looking to the judges, and the judges are not doing anything, and they say, give us a king. God wants to rule his people through judges, not through a king. Israel was ruled for plus minus 400 years by judges. Whenever trouble came, God raised up a judge. And the judge told the people what to do. A king is not close to God to hear exactly his voice. Except if the king takes a prophet. Like David. David had always the prophet. And when he wanted to do something, he... Asked the prophet, what is God saying? And the prophet gave him the word. And that's why the government of David as a king was successful and prospered. But it was from the beginning not God's plan. He wanted judges that can hear the voice of God and that can speak to the people. So then, let's go to the book of Samuel. Samuel starts the transition of judges to king. Samuel was the last judge in Israel. So now the rule of God that came through the judges must now come through kings. In other words, the spiritual leadership does a better thing than the natural leadership for the country. But the spiritual leadership during the time of Samuel declined. 1 Samuel chapter 3. 1 Samuel chapter 3. And verse 1. Then the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. He was still young. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. He's talking about the sons of God. He's talking about the judges. He's talking about the priest that's supposed to do what is right in the eyes of God. Let me tell you something. I believe that we are living in a time that God is going to shake pastors. That's why I fear him greatly. That's why I look for him. 
Let me tell you something. The leadership of the Christian organization will be shaken by God. If he did it here, he will do it again. And when the word came to Samuel, because Samuel was still a young man, it says in verse 7, Samuel did not yet know the Lord, for the word of the Lord was not yet revealed to him. I pray that every pastor, every leader of Christian people will hear the voice of God. I pray that we in this church will hear the voice of God so that we can speak to you. We know the story that Eli was old and he had two sons that were supposed to take over as priests and they took over as priests, but they were corrupt. That's what the Bible says. They were to go corrupt. And then as priests, they did not know the Lord. Now, how can you do a priestly service if you don't know the Lord? How can I stand here on this platform and speak to you if I don't know the Lord? That's my desire for 2023, that I will hear his voice constantly. That God will give us revelation and understanding so that I can stand here in truth and speak to you to help you in your future. So when the churches are corrupt, when the priests are corrupt, what is it that God should do? His priests don't know him. And they are corrupt, Hophni and Phineas, the two sons of Eli, the priest. Eli, as judge and priest, need to bring God's word for the nation, but God does not speak anymore. How will the nation know what to do if God doesn't speak? How will the nation do if, if, if we don't know what God's desire is for us? If he can't hear his voice. Remember that the Bible says that people are like sheep. We need someone to lead us. And if the leader doesn't know where to lead you. We both fall into the pitch. That's my desire to come close to God in 2023. So that we can lead you to victory in Jesus name. So to those priests, the temple service was just like a ritual. And I believe there are some churches all over the world that is just a ritual. I don't want that in our church. That is what happened to Hophni and Phinehas. When the Philistines came to fight Israel, and Israel was defeated, and 4,000 of the soldiers died. They came, the elders came and they said, why has the Lord defeated us today? We can't say that because God will never defeat us if we serve him. It's when we stop serving him that we will be defeated. But now they blame God. So they looked around the elders and they said, let's bring the Ark of the Covenant into the battlefield. In other words, now suddenly the eyes is not on God, the eyes is on the Ark. Yes, the Ark, God mentioned it to build it. And the Ark has a place in the tabernacle or in the temple. And the Ark is a holy place. But it's not God. In other words, the people in those times, they looked to the ark and they thought that the ark is God. Let me tell you something, the ark is not God. The ark cannot save you. This church cannot save you. Jesus will save you. So the eyes were not on God anymore, but on the ark and the two sons of Eli, Hophni, and Phinehas was with the ark, and they came to the battlefield. And look what it says in 1 Samuel chapter 4, and in, in verse 5, 
it says, And when the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted so loudly that the earth shook. And everyone thought, now God is in our midst and we will get the victory. Mm -mm. Verse 6, now when the Philistines heard the noise of this shout, they said, what does the sound of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews mean? Then they understood that the ark of the Lord had come into the camp. So verse 7, two, so the Philistines were afraid. For they said, God has come into the camp. Even the enemy is afraid of the ark. But the ark is not God. Woe to us, for such a thing has never happened before. Woe to us, they said, the Philistines. Who will deliver us from the hand of these mighty gods? These are the gods who struck the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. But then they came to one another and said, Be strong and conduct yourself like men, you Philistines, that you do not become servants of the Hebrews as they have been to you. Conduct yourself like men and fight. So the Philistines fought and Israel was defeated. And every man fled to his tent and there was a very great slaughter and there fell of Israel 30,000 foot soldiers. First 4,000, now 30,000 people fell. Why? Because the eyes are not on God. The eyes are on something that is of God. That's why I can't come to you in the name of Fountain of Life Church. I can only come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, help us. Help us in 2023, Lord, to take your name, to have a real relationship with the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Verse 11. Also the ark of God was captured, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni, and Phinehas died. Let me prophesy to you what happened there with the priests of God that did not know God. They died in one day. And the ark of the covenant was stolen. I believe that the shakings that God said is coming that many of the priests that doesn't know God will die. Look at the danger of refusing God. Let me take you to a prophetic word in Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 25 to 29. It says, see that you do not refuse him who speaks. What is he saying? See that you don't refuse the Lord God when he speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him, who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape as we turn away from him that speaks from heaven. Hophni and Phinehas could not escape the judgment of God. But we have decided 2023, we're going to hear the voice of God. Verse 26, whose voice then spoke, then shook the earth. The voice shook the earth, yeah. When they brought the Ark of the Covenant, it shook the earth. But now he says, and has promised, saying, once more I will shake not only the earth, but I shall also shake heaven. In other words, God can also shake the earth. Now this once yet once more indicates the removal of all things that are being shaken. The removal of all things that is shakable. God, if we have any shakable things in our church, in our lives, shake it out. Shake it out, Lord. He says that are being shaken as of things that are made that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. That's what we want in our church. Lord, 
Let all the things that cannot be shaken remain in our church. Help us to understand. Lead us by your spirit. Hallelujah. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, a kingdom that cannot be shaken, you know the Bible says that every kingdom in this world will bow the knees to the kingdom of God. Do you know that the kingdom of God has come and every kingdom will have to bow down to the kingdom of God? He says, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptable with reference and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. For our God is a consuming fire. Now here comes the scripture in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 17. Listen what it says. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. Where will judgment begin? Yeah. I say, Lord, let us get in line with God so that we will not be shaken. But the shaking will start at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what shall be the end of those that do not obey the gospel of God? Let me tell you something. 2023, I be believe it's the beginning that we will see great shakings in this world. But God said, before I shake the world, I will first shake the church. But what about the ark of God? They took the ark into the battlefield. Now the Philistines, they took the ark and they said, oh, hallelujah, we've got the ark of God. And they took it back into their country. But let me tell you something. God's judgment will be upon each and everything that is not of God. Even the Philistines, when they have the ark with them, they put the ark in the house of Dagon. Dagon was a big image that they made that stood there. And they came and they worshipped this image that cannot hear, that cannot speak, that cannot think, that can do nothing. Now the ark of God comes in the temple of Dagon. But in the morning when they came into the temple, Dagon has fallen on his nose, on his face to the ground. And they didn't know what was going on. So quickly they took Dagon and they picked him up again. Dagon, if he's a God, he can stand up himself. He can't. He's not a God. So they put him up again. Then they went to bed and the next morning when they came back into, into the temple of Dagon, here he was again on his face. And this time his hands were broken off and parts of the was broken off. He's now useless. May every false God become useless in the time that we live in the name of the Lord. So, the people of Asdod, where they had the Ark of the Covenant in the, in the Philistine uh, country, was suddenly struck by tumors. And they looked at this and they said, this is because of the ark. Let's take the ark and send it back. So now fear comes for the ark of the enemy. May the fear of God comes with the enemy to God's people. Oh, hallelujah. So they took the ark and they sent it to Gath, another city in the from, from the Philistines. The city was plagued with tumors and with rats, just like the first place in Asdod. And they said, why did you send it to us? Now the plague is here. What are we going to do with the ark of the Lord? Let's send it away to Ekron. And Ekron said, no, don't send it to us. We don't want the ark. Look what it has happened. And then the plague came to the people of Ekron. And they say, what must we do? He says, let us take the ark and send it back to Israel. So they built a new car. And they took two milk cows. Milk cows that had calves. Now, a milk cow, a cow, if you are a farmer, you know that if the, if the cow has, has, uh, has calves, 
They will always look at the calves. They said, well, we put it in front of the ark, a new cart and, and, and the ark on the cart, and we'll see if those cows doesn't want worry about the calves and run straight to Israel, that this disaster came from God. And they rec recognized that God is God. May the world see through the people of God that God is God. May you and I demonstrate the works of God. And may they come and say, oh God, your God is God. And may God save many thousands of people in Jesus' name because the greatest revival is coming at the end time and we are very close to the end time. The word of God prophesies that the latter rain and the former rain will come together in the end. That means the greatest revival ever will be in the time that we are, but it will be when God is shaking everything out, which is not of God. So they said, but how can we send the ark of God back without a trespass offering? And because we had the problems with, with the rats and with tumors, let us make five tumors of gold and five golden rats and we put it on the cart and we send it back. And when they had it on the cart, they send it back. Those, those cows run to the border of Israel without any worrying about the calves. I believe the same will happen in our days. The presence of God will either bring blessings or it will bring a curse. So they decided to build a new cart. It took time. It was seven months in the Philistines. And they, they had so much trouble with it. But they sent it back and it went straight back to Beth Shemesh, which is across the border in Israel's territory. They said, now we know that the disaster that came to us is because of the God of Israel. We took the Ark of the Covenant and it brought all the disaster. So either God will bring blessings and prosperity, healing, deliverance, salvation, or curses. It's the two ways. Let me tell you something, church. We can't play with God, with God's presence. God is God. God is almighty. God is the great I am. I want you to serve God. Don't serve us. Serve God. But now we look to Israel. What did Israel do? Oh, when they were in the harvest field, they were harvesting, they saw that the suddenly here comes a, a cart with two milk cows in front of it with the Ark of the Covenant on. And they shouted so loudly, they were so happy. And then the Levites came and they took the Ark off and they said, we're going to bring a sacrifice to God. So they, they cut it into pieces and they used the wood for a fire and they took the two cows and they killed it and they put it on the altar to bring Glory to God. But then the big trouble came. Because God's people, Israel, opened up the ark of the covenant and they looked into the ark, which was not allowed. Only the high priest once a year with lots of preparation can come into the holy place and do the service of God in the holy place. But now ordinary people just open up the ark and they look into the ark. And what happened? God slayed 50,070. 50,000. So the first time it was 4,000, 4, then 30,000. Now 50,000 people died. If this can happen, church, in the Old Testament, God has not changed. 
it can happen in our days. But when I looked at the picture this morning and I saw the love of God the Father upon you, I heard the voice that says, tell the people I love them very, very much. All this is disaster will not come to you because you have made the Lord your God, your God. And this is what we want to do in 2023. Or what shall we do in, 19, in 2023? Or what will God do in 2023? I just pray that God will help us to fulfill his plan and his purposes for this year and if there is more years to come for all the years until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I'm proud with you that you are here today because you love Jesus. You are here today because you want to hear the voice of God. You are here because you don't want to be crushed by God. You want to be blessed and prosper by God. So let me pray for you. Father, here are your people. We have given our life to you. We've asked you to forgive our sins and you are faithful to just to forgive our sins if we come to you to ask you to forgive it. And you take our sins and you throw it in the lake of forgetfulness. There's a board up that says, don't know fishing. We know that the devil comes and he, he wants to remind us, but God says, no fishing. So we thank you, Lord God, that you are on our side. In this difficult world that we live and we don't know exactly what's going to happen in the future. But the future is in your hands and it is not our worries. We are going to prosper. We are be, will be in good health. We will be God's people. The blessings of God will be upon us. Oh God, we thank you for the promises in the word of God. Your word of God will not lie. Now, Lord, as we are living one year closer to the coming of the Lord, I pray that you will prepare each and every one. Let us look forward to the coming of the Lord. Let us pray for the coming of the Lord. Let us ask God to bless us in this year. But I pray, Lord, maybe we have still weak points in our life. I pray that you will strengthen us. It's the word of God that will strengthen us. I will pray, Lord God, that our families, our friends, that does not serve God, that they will see the love and the joy inside of us, that they will say, why are you happy in the time that there's so much destruction? Because we serve the living God. I pray, Lord God, that you will also bring them in. Lord, it is the congregation's job to be a testimony to others and to bring them into the house of God. Let us see this, this year happening. And let the prophetic word of God come and come to fulfilling in Jesus' name. We thank you for the security. We thank you, Lord God, for your healing power. We thank you, Lord God, for your salvation power. We thank you, Lord God, for your, that you said you want us to prosper and many people have a need for something in the world, but your people will not have a, a lack because God loves us so much. If God gave his only begotten son for you, how much does he love you and want you to have the best? Lord, break everything in our lives that is not right yet. And let us come closer to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We serve you, Lord God, with all of your heart. And we thank you, Lord God, that we could be together in this place to hear what God is saying for 2023. We shall not fear. We shall not fear. But we will have faith in God. And we will hear the testimonies of